This case is a suboccipital telovelar craniotomy used for resection of a dorsal pontine cavernous malformation. This 24-year-old female presented with left facial droop, facial numbness, gait difficulties, and a history of several bleeds caused by this pontine cavernous malformation located in the dorsal brainstem. The magnetic resonance imaging demonstrates the classic appearance of a cavernous malformation located eccentric to the left side in the dorsal pons, with significant telangiectasias present throughout the pons, as well as a large developmental venous anomaly. We elected to approach this lesion using a midline suboccipital craniotomy and a telovelar extension to resect the cavernous malformation. After performing a suboccipital craniotomy, the telovelar junction is exposed by dissecting the arachnoid adhesions connecting the cerebellar hemispheres and the cerebellar vermis. This anatomical dissections expose the telovelar junction. For resection of dorsal pontine lesions at the level of the facial colliculus, a lateral entry into the brainstem using the superior fovea has been described as a safe entry zone. That's what was used to approach the lesion in this case. And another anatomical dissection demonstrates the operative view obtained after a wide suboccipital craniotomy. For lesions that are high riding in the dorsal pons, a significant opening in the caudal direction is necessary for the surgeon to obtain the necessary view rostrally to approach these lesions. This anatomic dissection demonstrates the local anatomy at the level of the facial colliculus. Approaches at the midline are less well tolerated in the dorsal pons than those approaches that are placed slightly off midline. Again, for this lesion and for other lesions located at the level of the facial colliculus, using the superior fovea has been described as a safe entry zone. The patient is placed prone, and the intraoperative photo demonstrates the skin incision necessary for performing this suboccipital approach. The dotted line demonstrates the possible extension necessary in the caudal direction so that the surgeon may obtain the rostral view necessary to approach this lesion. A significant tucking of the chin and flexion of the neck is necessary for these cases. After performing a midline suboccipital craniotomy, the cerebellar hemispheres are visualized. The arachnoid overlying the cisterns are open, and cerebrospinal fluid release is performed to obtain cerebellar relaxation. In this case, it's important to open the telovelar junction, exposing the foramen of Lushka. This is critical for obtaining the off-lateral trajectory necessary to enter this cavernous malformation. Once the telovelar craniotomy is performed, the neuronavigation is utilized to obtain a point of ideal entry into the brainstem to resect the cavernous malformation. In the dorsal pons, several safe entry zones have been described to resect lesions deep to the peel surface. We elected to utilize a superior fovea safe entry zone, given that this lesion was located at about the level of the facial colliculus. A small opening is placed into the brainstem, and by stretching, the opening is enlarged just enough for a suction and a microinstrument to be placed within the opening to resect the cavernous malformation. The classic appearance of the cavernous malformation is apparent. Hemocytorin staining demonstrate that this lesion has bled in the past. The cavernous malformation caverns are resected in a piecemeal fashion using tooth microforceps. The tooth microforceps are critical because they allow the surgeon to peel the cavernous malformation from adjacent eloquent tissue, therefore minimizing injury to this tissue. This technique also minimizes the use of cautery at the completion of the procedure, hemostasis is performed. The patient's exam was neurologically stable without a significant change in the patient's facial function. Postoperative magnetic resonance imaging demonstrates complete removal of the cavernous malformation with preservation of the developmental venous anomaly. This last magnetic resonance imaging, which is a flare sequence, also nicely demonstrates the path of entry into the cavernous malformation. This path of entry is eccentric to the left side and off midline from the floor to fourth ventricle. The telovelar craniotomy is important and necessary to be able to obtain this lateral view necessary to obtain the resection of the lesion.